a frantic expression of grief. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم النبيين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of the souls and the enlightenment of the hearts and for the hastening of the reappearance of the awaited Savior Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif enlightening your souls in the atmosphere with the recitation of salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the most difficult things when it comes to speaking and the challenges that faces many speakers is to speak after a break which included lunch or dinner. This makes the task even more challenging. Yet we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can help each other in order to focus on the subject of discussion. When you and I arrived to this particular location and this area yesterday or today, the first thing that we were asked to do was to register. We were asked to identify ourselves. We presented our name, where we come from, and we were given a badge. A badge that contains our name and distinguishes us from others, makes us stand out from the other human beings. The question of identity, of course, is much bigger than a name that you and I possess for identification purposes. The concept of identity is a very significant and important idea that has been discussed for many years amongst different circles around the world. And perhaps when it comes to identity, we find it to be an essential element that people from back in the time, even at the time of the Holy Prophet and afterwards, struggled to define. We find that the Qur'an presents a beautiful idea. The Qur'an says, and historical accounts say, that at the time of Jahiliyyah, many people used to present themselves and their identity was defined by the fact that they belonged to certain groups, tribes, communities. In other words, they used to boast about their forefathers and whom they belonged to as far as tribal affiliations are concerned. Once, the famous companion of the Holy Prophet, Salman al-Muhammadi, peace and blessings be upon him, was in the mosque of the Holy Prophet of Islam. And some of the companions who were sit sitting there were boasting and they were talking about their past. So they were identifying themselves by naming their forefathers, by referring to their ancestors. So then they referred to and they looked at Salman, knowing that his father was a Zoroastrian. His father, of course, was a sun worshipper. So some of them, very well renowned in the Muslim world today, without mentioning their names, wanted to highlight this so-called fault, this deficiency in Salman. They said to him, Oh Salman, what about you? Why don't you identify yourself? Salman looked at, at them and said, Ana Salman ibn Abdullah. I am Salman, the son of the servant of Allah. Kuntu faqiran. 
فَأَغْنَيْتُ بِمُحَمَّدْ I was a poor, destitute individual and I was made wealthy due to the following of Muhammad. وَكُنْتُ ظَالًا فَهُدِيْتُ بِمُحَمَّدْ I was a man who had gone astray and I was shown the right path through the following of this man, the Holy Prophet Muhammad and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the question that we have to ask ourselves first and foremost is how do you and I define our identities? What is identity anyway? And why is it that we need to define it? And what kind of challenges faces us in the 21st century? These are very briefly the areas that I wish to examine. But particularly paying attention to what the Quran says about our identity. Many a times we neglect what the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented to us as far as our real identity is concerned. The first question that we have to ask ourselves is, how do we define our identities? Sometimes certain people define their identities or the identities of others by referring to their achievements. What stands out in their lives? So Isaac Newton, for example, the first thing that comes to your mind when the name Isaac Newton is mentioned is what? Gravity. Or for example, you'll find other ulama, other scholars. Shaykh al-Tabrasi, rahmatullahi alayhi. A man, a renowned scholar, the author of Majma' al-Bayan. Some people, when they refer to the name Shaykh al-Tabrasi, the first thing that comes to their minds is the image of an author of a, of, of a tafsir of the Qur'an, of a commentary of the holy book, the holy Qur'an. Others might remember Shaykh al-Tabrasi for other reasons. For example, what happened to him when he died before authoring the book? You might ask, how? Shaykh al-Tabrasi passed away before compiling his tafsir Majma' al-Bayan. And when he passed away, they performed the rituals, they washed his body, they, they, uh, they uh, put a shroud over his body, and they buried him. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to come back. When he was there, and when they put the bricks on top of his body, his heart that had stopped working started pumping again. And he was given life once more. When he was given life, that moment that the shaykh noticed that he was alive once more, made this oath with Allah, made this special connection that we will come back to later to identify what is it that we need to define as far as our identities are concerned. This shaykh spoke to Allah. When you and I speak to Allah, it needs to be at a comfort zone, not in an instance where we're not used to. Shaykh al-Tabrasi and many of the ulamas, they're used to conversing with the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in his grave, you can imagine what would you do? He spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Ya Allah, if I am to be relieved of this misfortune and this difficulty, and if I was to be let out of the grave, I will write and compile a commentary of the Holy Qur'an. Allah the Almighty answered his supplication. There was a man who used to steal the coffins, the kafan, so to speak. So he'd wait after a deceased would be buried, and then he would go, he would take the body out, and he would steal the kafan. When he saw Shaykh al-Tabrasi being buried, he thought, this is a Mawlana, his kafan must be special, holy, so I'll sell it, you know. For a special price. When he came and dug the grave, immediately Shaykh al-Tabrasi is moving and you can imagine what this man, this thief is thinking. He's thinking this only happens in movies. Of course, there weren't movies at that time. But he looked at this uh, particular body moving and he was uh, frightened. And Shaykh al-Tabrasi said to him, Don't worry. Allah has given me life back again. Help me and I will give you my kafan. Don't worry. Your reward is my kafan. So this thief helps Shaykh al-Tabrasi takes him back home. Now you can imagine his family who are mourning and who have just lost this great man, the knock on the door and Shaykh al-Tabrasi is standing with his kafan. Salaam alaikum, I'm here. You can imagine what they thought of. But what happened was that he was immediately the instrumental force or the inspiration for this man to be inspired into the right path. This thief was then a student of the Shaykh and the Shaykh wrote his famous commentary. Some people might define individuals through their achievements. Others 
through the area and the land in which they reside. You may be an American, you may be a Canadian, you may be a British, you may be a Pakistani, an Iraqi. People define themselves in accordance with the land that they which reside or they come from. Others define themselves due to the culture and the traditional ways that they have brought up with. The fourth mechanism of defining what an identity is, is in reference to religion. Many people would place themselves and would identify themselves and associate themselves with the belief system that they've subscribed to. So for example, a few years ago, an organization in the United States conducted a survey with 200 young Muslim Americans. And they asked them to identify themselves. Over half of them said there was a problem, there was a conflict between their identities as being American and their identities as being Muslim. In 2008, a Pew survey conducted in the United States for 60,000 Muslims residing in America came up with the following conclusion, and that was that 60, 47 percent, sorry, of the people who were asked said that they were Muslim first and Americans second. Now you and I might identify with this. Today if you're asked anywhere, who are you? Identify yourself. The first thing that comes to your mind is one of these four methods. One of these four ways of introducing yourself. Either religion or background or your place of birth or the area in which you reside. Question, is there a conflict between these? Can we be American Muslims? Or should we be Muslims first before American? Should we be British before being Muslims? Or should we be Shia before Pakistani? Is there a conflict? Because many of the youth face these challenges in their lives. They go to the schools and to the colleges and they encounter these questions. People have a problem. What the problem is, they say that in this survey and many others, the Muslims are not patriotic to their country of residence. They say we're Muslims first, Americans second. That means that they do not love their country as much as they love their religion. Therefore, this might be an issue for some people. And hence, you find the media that's thirsty to criticize Islam and Muslims, picking on these points. Incidentally, the same company, Pew Survey, conducted the same set of questions to a Christian denomination, a group of Christians, and the outcome was very similar. A very similar percentage of people said that they were Christians first and Americans second. Yet you won't find this mentioned in CNN or Fox News, of course. The question that we have to ask ourselves is, is there a conflict and is there an answer in the Qur'an to resolve this conflict that many may be facing in the Muslim world today? Let's look at the Qur'an. The Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Book mentions emphatically that as far as the, your real identity, as far as your purpose of existence as far as how you will be distinguished from the other human beings is none of those four points that I mentioned. Is not the country of residence. Is not the what? Is not the culture. Is not your achievements. Is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not even religion. It's not even religion. You might say, hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Religion identifies you. Allah says, no. Ya ayyuhal nas. Inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha. Wa ja'annaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. Allah says, oh people, we have made you of males and females. And deliberately divided you into subgroups, subnations, tribes and communities. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most beloved, the most honored amongst you in the eyes of Allah is the one who is God conscious. That's the true identity of every human being. That's the identity that we need to begin our search for these answers as far as any conflicting identities that exist in our lives. The Almighty says that don't worry about all the other conflicts that arise. Establish this relationship first and everything else will fall into place. The Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. 
mentions لا فرق بين عربي وأعجمي إلا بالتقوى. There is no difference between an Arab and a non-Arab except through piety. So therefore you'll find this idea infused within the Holy Quran and within the prophetic narrations that taqwa ultimately defines the most important relationship and that's between human beings and their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Question, if we have established this, and if we've identified that the taqwa is essential as the foundation block in order to search for the answers, is there a conflict of being an American and a Muslim or a Canadian and a Muslim? No. Why? Because when you come to study Islam, Islam is a religion that is encompassing. That is tolerant. Islam, for example, preaches good citizenship, the love of the neighbor, the love of the law of the land, if it does not contradict Islamic teachings. And if you live in the West, and if you live in America, you'll find that there is no conflict between being an American and being a Muslim, between being a European and being a Muslim. These can go side by side. Why? Because Islam is a religion that is all-encompassing and has welcomed nations and different tribes. Many people would then ask the following question. What is it that is the problem then? Why are we having conflicts? Why are we having disputes and difficulties? Why is it that we cannot identify ourselves? It's because we have cocooned ourselves and we have barricaded our communities and are not open to the others. We do not like to integrate. We do not like to speak about our faith, our religion, our practice. And hence, there is an identity crisis. And hence we find it difficult to identify ourselves as being Muslims who are living in America or in Canada or in Europe or as being Americans or Canadians who happen to be Muslims. Many a times we do not understand and do not rise to the occasion of those who label themselves as Muslim. You see, because there are many those who come forward and state that they are Muslims. Or they state that they are the lovers of, for example, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Let me narrate to you this particular poem. This morning you heard several poems recited by Allama Iqbal in Urdu. So I felt slightly jealous and I thought I'll recite some poetry in Arabic just to counteract the balance, even though I know the majority of the crowd won't probably understand it. I'll try to translate anyway. Here you'll find there is a Christian who, uh, who is a Lebanese. And he comes forward and states the following poetry in the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, He says, in the Christian, the truth has been infused into him. Due to his excessive love, he is now being called an Alawi, the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I am the one who loves justice, who loves righteousness, who loves virtue, and the sublime morality. If Ali ibn Abi Talib is not a prophet, his akhlaq was indeed that of the prophets. And then he mentions and concludes, فَيَا سَمَاءُ اشْهَدِي وَيَا أَرْضُ قُرِّي O heavens be witness, and all the earth tremble in humility because I have mentioned the name of Ali ibn Abi Therefore, there are many who claim to be the lovers of the Ahl al-Bayt or claim to identify themselves as Muslims. Yet, is this identity in correspondence with their action? And that's the problem. That our behavior, our conduct with the others does not correspond to our claims to be following of certain individuals. There is a discretion or there is a problem between our claims and between our conduct in society many a times we do not resolve this particular challenge 
That's why we find the holy six Imam Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq salawatullahi wa sallam He says that you as our followers, you need to be the exemplary individuals. Kunu lana shaynan wa la takunu be for us a wonderful exemplar individual. Be for us those who others look up to. Hatta yaqulun nas rahim Allah Ja'far ibn Muhammad kayfa adaba shi'ata. So people would say, peace and blessings be upon this man Ja'far ibn Muhammad. He knew how to train his Shia. He knew what to leave for his followers. And this is the challenge that faces us today. That there must be no dichotomy between our conduct and between our claims of following the religion of Islam and the school of Ahl al-Bayt. These must go side by side. But let me take you a bit further. Let's delve into the Quranic principles of identity for the next few minutes and conclude. What is really the solution to our conflicting problems? Today, we find ourselves in a barrage and a complete blackening of materialism. Objects of desire facing us left, right and center in the West. And there is one important element that's missing in the lives of many people, and that's spirituality. You'll find that in the Latin language, spirituality is translated to breathing. They understood that through spirituality, a human being can, li can live. Without breathing, without infusing this oxygen, we cannot survive. We are told that many a times in the West, our spirituality is not of the level that is desired or expected from those individuals who believe or who subscribe to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran itself says that when it comes to identifying yourself, Say Allah and then leave them. We need to search for the, in the Quran to find solutions as far as our real identity is concerned. Do not be afraid to speak about spirituality to others who are yearning, who are seeking spirituality out there in the world today. The problem is that we do not do so, we do not practice it. Otherwise, others will come towards the religion and will see that this is the form of inspiration. You see, many people... Today, they're intoxicated with the love of materialism. These pop stars, these famous personalities, they either go into drugs or they go to illicit relationships. They are finding some light that they can find some kind of tranquility and happiness. And that lies only with spirituality and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me take you very briefly to chapter 25 of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you want to know where your identity is? Do you want to work for your own identity? Then look at the Quran. The Quran gives you the solution. Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, the final few verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you want to identify yourself as the servant of Allah, which is the most sublime identity you and I can hold, better than being an imam, a scholar, an ayatullah, a prophet. You say, what are you talking about? Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan. Allah says in Surah Al-Asra, Glory be unto Allah whom took his servant. He doesn't say his prophet in tashahud. What do we say? وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولًا This is the initiation to be at the level of servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be the foundation for our Identity. The Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, if you look at chapter 25, Surah Al-Furqan, it says, وَعِبَادُ Rahman." 13 characteristics and qualities, brothers and sisters. Have we looked at it? Have we examined it? Do we fit into this definition? We're looking at the Oxford Dictionary, and we like to define, for example, what does it mean to belong to certain groups? Yet here the Quran is telling you, define yourself, and Allah is telling you, if you want to be of my servants, then follow these 13 qualities and you will be classified under the ibad of Allah, the ibad of Rahman, the servants of the merciful, of the beneficent. What does he say? 
وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما Allah says in the Quran Do you want to know who my true sincere servants are? Those who walk on the earth humbly They walk with humility They display tawadu Allahu Akbar The most sublime quality of Ibadur Rahman That has been placed in the Holy Quran As an identity and initiation of the characteristics Of the servants of the Almighty Is none other than showing humility Towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And towards His creation Following on The Almighty says وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When the ignorant speak to you and I, and how many of them are there today? Islam is under attack. There is increasing Islamophobia everywhere, in the media, on the streets, in colleges, at schools, at places of work. People who are ignorant, they've heard that everybody follows this terrorist, or everyone subscribes to a religion of hatred. And hence, they might insult you. And hence, they might something to say something against the sisters who are wearing hijab. Or the brothers, for any other reason, the Quran says one of the important qualities is when the ignorant speak to you, you say peace, you say salama. In other words, you reciprocate the evil with love and compassion. This is what many Muslims don't do express their love towards humanity. Islam today is known as a religion of violence. Islam, unfortunately, has been put side by side and has been hijacked by elements of individuals who claim to be following the religion, yet they are far away from, the, from its teachings. And today, what we need to learn is the Islam of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, the Islam of love. The Islam of Hussein ibn Ali, who stood on the battlefields of Karbala and he was crying. And when they looked at him and said, Ya Aba Abdullah, why is it you are crying? He said, those people in front, 30,000, I am crying because I feel sorry for them. I have compassion for them. They're going to hellfire because of me. This is the Islam that we need to present to the world. The Islam of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad is Islam of tolerance and coexistence. The Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. We don't have time to examine all the verses that the Almighty speaks about. 13 qualities. Today, if you have time, go to chapter 25. Go to ayah 63. And look at this. And think with yourself. Do I fit into this criteria that Allah wants me to fit into so that my conflicting identities will be resolved? Because it doesn't matter whether I'm an American Muslim or a Muslim living in America. I could be an exemplar if I am the true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala will open every avenue in front of my eyes and illuminate the path in front of me. We are told... But in the Quran, the verses continue and they say, for example, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّةً وَقِيَامًا Those who stand in the night, remembering the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, whilst everyone else is asleep. You claim to be the lover of the, of the Almighty, you claim to be the lover of Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein, there needs to be evidence to substantiate this claim. And one of the important elements is this desire to converse with Allah. Munajat! Munajat is of the utmost importance. We do not speak enough with the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. We speak with others. We are constantly engaged with other human beings. We have these gadgets. We contact people, email, Twitter, Facebook, other means. We are constantly asking others and requiring replies from others. And Allah is left at the time of salah for maybe 10 seconds. Or if we're lucky, one minute. And at the Maha Ramadan and some other times of the year. The Almighty says, leave me some time. At least give me some time in the darkness of the night when everyone is asleep. You see, if you want to identify yourself, if you today have decided that your identity is the Shia of Ja'far ibn Muhammad, Ja'far ibn Muhammad says the following, لَيْسَ مِنْ شِيَعَتِنَا Perform Salatul Layl. Then they could re-examine this claim once more. 
And so we find this emphasis in the Quran of spirituality, of the real identity of establishing this close proximity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verse then continues and says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ ذَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا I have taken more of my allocated time. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to identify ourselves in the light of the Qur'an. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to illuminate the path in order for the conflict that may arise in our lives to be resolved. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to infuse in our hearts the love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammad wa Ali al-Tabibin al-Tabibin.